<laughs> so I wanted to make this Ronin S part two video, right? Like showing the features of the gimbal and how it works and do some real world tests, real world tests, which clearly went out the window when I thought operating jet skis on a lake with some of my buddies would be a great idea to show how this gimbal performs. which is not practical at all, we got out on the water and quickly realized, uh, there's nowhere to store this, there's nowhere to operate this, there's nowhere to balance this. This is a terrible idea. And to kind of go through with that, you would have to be fully willing to accept the fact that there is a very good possibility you will lose both the Ronin S and your 1DX Mark II. So with that being said, we're not doing any of that. It's gonna be a straight up review because that's the professional and responsible thing to do. <laughs> I had good intentions, intro. What's up everybody, Peter McKinnon here and welcome back to yet another video. Today we're talking about part two of the DJI Ronin S. It is an incredible gimbal. So if you haven't heard of this before and you haven't seen the first video, I will link it above. I made it right here. If you are looking to stabilize your footage, if you want the smoothest, creamiest, buttery, most, I'm done with adjectives. It's so good. It's a great gimbal. It's gonna smooth out your footage really, really well, give you that professional look. And it's got a few tricks up its sleeve to just make you a better filmmaker, a better cinematographer, give you more professional looking footage. And that's, that's why we're all here, right? We wanna step up that game. And sometimes technology is pushed to the point where a product can help us do that, that's today. I believe it would be very difficult indeed for me to add to that. Happy to be able to do it too. One of the things with a gimbal that's very hard to kind of judge if it's good or not is when you shoot some examples in 120 or slow motion because 120 and slow motion shooting, that's gonna give you stable footage as it is. So when you throw that on a gimbal and you're shooting slow-mo, it's gonna be the slowest, mo it's gonna be perfect. It's gonna look really, really good and it's hard to make that not look good. So for these tests, we're gonna do a whole bunch of different things so you guys just see the raw, non-edited, non-slow motion, non-warp stabilized, just straight out of the camera examples with and without. So here is a shot of me walking without any stabilization. Now here's the same shot of me walking in the exact same path with the Ronin S. And these are all shot at 24 frames per second. So we're gonna do the same test again now. Here's a shot of me running handheld with no stabilization. Now here's that same shot, 24 frames a second, of me running with the Ronin S. So I'm wanting to put these examples in this video so you can make the decision for yourself. How good does that look with big footsteps? When you are running, when you're walking, is this gimbal performing to your satisfaction? And to me, yes, absolutely it is. It almost takes out all of those giant steps entirely. I wanna show you those same clips again, but underslung so we can get some shots of the feet because shooting feet is very hard if you don't have anything, no extra apparatus to do so. If you're just trying to hold your camera and hold it down near someone's feet and you're trying to walk with them, it's very hard, A, to keep focus, B, to make sure that you have everything in frame and it looks good, and C, 
it's really hard to keep that stable because now you're you're bent down at a really weird angle trying to hold that camera. You can't really see the screen. This is what walking looks like at 24 frames per second, holding it as low to the ground as we can to capture someone's feet. Now here's that same clip, underslung, 24 frames per second using the Ronin S. Now here's that same clip running, no Ronin S, 24 frames per second. And now here's that same clip underslung, running, 24 frames per second with the Ronin S. So not only is it very easy to hold it to the ground because of that extended grip, and you're able to just basically walk behind someone, no effort, without even having to bend down low and wreck your back, it just looks so much better. So I will leave all of those tests, and I wanted to just make them as basic and as easy as I could so that you guys could make a very easy decision if this is something that you think you could benefit from. I didn't want to make it crazy like on jet ski. I hope those tests actually help you out to see if you think that gimbal is gonna do what you need it to do, especially holding a DSLR that's not exactly light. And that's a 16 to 35 lens that I have on it right now. So you gotta keep in mind, that's a heavy payload and it's doing a very, very good job. So when you're working with infinite roll, which is the feature where the camera just rolls 360 and it just keeps going and it looks super cool, um, I hit the mode button until I went over to mode three. Then I opened up the app. Now, these are the settings you're gonna wanna put into your own app if you wanna be able to enable that infinite roll and it goes like this. So you're gonna open your Ronin app and you're gonna go into control settings. Once you're in control settings, you're gonna hit channels. Now you're gonna make sure channel two is set to NA and channel three is set to roll. And you can do that by just touching that, scrolling over to whatever, but that's the settings I have for roll for channel three, nothing for channel two, and I have tilt for channel one. That way, and you're done, once you're done with that, you can swipe up and, and be finished. That way, when you're ready to shoot the infinite roll, you hold down that trigger, you go into flashlight mode, and then once you're in flashlight mode, you're just gonna hold that joystick all the way over when you're in mode three, and it's gonna infinite roll your camera, enabling you to get those really cool creative shots. So that's how you do infinite roll. It was a little bit of a search for me to figure it out the first time, but that's how uh, I've achieved it. And if you're looking to do the same effect, that's how you're gonna do it too. Okay, now here's an example of me running left to right, and we're gonna whip pan without the Ronin S left to right. Now here's that same clip of me running left to right. We're gonna whip pan using the Ronin S, holding down M for sport mode to get that nice smooth track. Just looks so good. Let's talk about the joystick on the back for a second. It's the same kind of joystick that you have on your drone remotes. It's easy to push, it's easy to grip, it actually feels really, really comfortable, but it is extremely helpful. You're really able to fine tune the exact movements of your camera to get the perfect shot exactly how you want it. So if you want to just spin around a tree or spin around an object or show anything close up, you can hold it down, it's gonna go faster. You can just hold it a little bit and it's gonna go a lot slower. So the fact the joystick is there is very, very helpful. You'll find yourself using it a lot, especially when you use it paired with a camera move. So if you're going from top to bottom or bottom to top and you're panning that camera up, being able to start with that camera facing down and you're holding that joystick backwards and then you rock back. So now you have the movement from up to down as well as the camera tilting up and down. That's gonna make those shots extra cinematic. You see, it's all these little features packed inside that's gonna give you really unique abilities that you just didn't have before. Like the infinite spin or doing these crazy camera moves where you're rolling in as you're tilting the camera. These types of things are what really make this stand out. 
All of those shots are now going to look better because you have something stabilized. That's what I mean when I say it makes your footage look more professional. Can you get away with it handheld? Absolutely. I shoot handheld a lot and I use slow motion to compensate for not having a gimbal. And if I don't have slow motion on, usually I use some kind of warp stabilizer to be able to get a little more smoothness out of that footage. Now, why is this something that we all want? Because it's just pleasing. Camera shake looks good when you're intending your scene to be intense or stressful. You want that camera shake. Sometimes you don't want a gimbal, but for the most part, when it comes down to B-roll or getting really beautiful cinematic shots out of a helicopter or landscapes or a car driving by or somebody running, a lot of the time, this type of technology is going to make your work better. That's why I really wanted to kind of show you all of these raw examples today and how something like this under $1,000, what it's gonna do for your production and your quality overall. I think if you're very passionate and serious about your work and you're wanting to make a difference in your production quality, charge more for your wedding films or whatever corporate videos you might be making or make your YouTube videos look better, I think this is a necessary investment. If you're just kind of a hobbyist and you're not sure, and maybe you just spent all your money on a camera, I would refer to some of the other videos that I've made that I'll try to link above on how to make your footage less shaky and stabilize it without using any really fancy equipment, just, you know, body moves that are gonna help you get better footage. Um, I would maybe start there until you can afford or justify the fact uh, for buying a gimbal. So that would be my advice. Should you buy this? Yes, if it makes sense for you. If it doesn't, not yet. But I think this is one of those products that you need to keep in mind, keep on the horizon because it just looks so good. It makes your footage just look so good. So that's it guys. I know this video was super long. I, I really wanted to touch on some of these points and I wanted to get you those raw examples that were very easy for you to determine yourself if you wanna buy this gimbal. So guys, that's it for today. Hit that like button if you like this video, smash it. If that's something that you're into, subscribe if you aren't already and I will see you in the next video. Peace.